everyone, it's Julia, and thank you so much for joining me today. I have a spring project in mind. I This is my first filming day back in my Minnesota sewing room. We're under a blizzard warning, and we are waiting for 8 to 12 inches of snow today. It's, it's really gloomy out right now and really windy, so my lighting is funky. It's dark dark in this studio anyway, and, and today it's not any, not any better. But yeah, welcome to Minnesota in April. But the project today is an inspiration that I had seen off of off of Instagram and it's and then I redid it and just did my own thing with it but it's my favorite weather is bird chirping weather and I am so looking forward to that. There's nothing like Minnesota in the spring if it ever gets here. And so we're going to be working on this today and I'm going to be doing some free motion, a free motion applique work. And I'm not certain what direction this is going to go or even what this is going to be. So let's just get started. I flipped the design over and traced it on the back side of my paper and picked out several different pieces of scraps that I'm going to be using for this for this appliques on this little design. Using a heavier canvas, this is a drop cloth cotton canvas that I'm using. And using heat and bond light and just tracing around each of these little pieces. It's easy to see through the heat and bond, so it's just easy to trace around these. I am writing what I think I'm going to be, which which ones for each, which piece of fabric, just writing the colors, and then just rough, rough cutting these out. I found this piece of batik fabric, and it's got several different shades of different colors in it, and I want the bird's pieces all to be in different colors of this, of this piece of scrap. And so I'm laying the wings on one side and the tail on the other, and then the, the head is in more in the yellows. Now you'll notice that a lot of these pieces already have heat and bond on the back. These are my scraps. And I do just use the heat and bond right over the top, um, which is somewhat a waste of heat and bond, but I, I, that way I'm able to get the exact shape that I need. And then just cutting all these out. And then, so when I peel off that back backing, I am going to be peeling off two layers on some of these that already have heat and, heat and bond on the back of them. I always put my pieces in this in a container because I can't tell you how many little beaks I've lost through the years. And then using my pattern as a guide, I'm just laying these out. And just layering them where I need need them to be in it, and then ironing them in, them into place. I'm using my Fiction pens by Pilot to just do some of the details, so I don't forget at the sewing machine to to do some of this. These will um, disappear once they're once they're heat, heated up. I just iron them, and, and the markings will disappear. I'm also going to be drawing in this eye so I can see that better when I'm at the sewing machine. This is a piece of stitch and tear that I am putting, stabilizer that I'm putting on the back side just to give it a little bit more body. You could also iron on a piece of freezer tape on, on freezer paper on this. Just showing you my view out my window of the snow, and I have these deer that come up and just stare at stare at me. They're so wooly right now. I feel I feel kind of bad for them. After all, it is April. I'm at my sewing machine, and I'm doing my free motion. So I have my free motion foot on, have my feed dogs dropped, and I'm going to be doing the movement on this. I have black thread on the top, so this, this whole thing will be stitched in black thread. I did not put black thread in the bobbin, and I should have. There, you can see the bobbin through a little bit. It's not bad, but it, you know you you might want to consider that if when you're free motioning to, to have the same color bobbin, color in the bobbin as you do on the top. I go through over my design more than once. I just kind of like the sketched on look. And now I am cutting my thread there. I have an automatic thread cutter. And then going on to, to do my eyeball. And this is in, in real time here. I do speed it up in a little bit, but this is real time. So you can see the, the motion and, and how fast I'm going. 
free motion is so fun because you can go forwards and backwards and in circles like right there on that eye, eye ball I went in a, in circles when I start my my thread I I do a little jig and then I'll cut my thread there are other ways of doing that you can pull it to the top and then cut and then cut it or and then drawing with my thread this is sped up now so it's going faster than my normal sewing putting a little design on the wing The first part of my stitching is done and I'm back over to my sewing or my, my pressing area again. I'm going to be tracing using freezer paper, tracing the um, words on onto my freezer paper. And I'm just going to, I can see through this freezer paper just fine, so I'm just going to be tracing the um, part of the words. I'm not going to be doing all of it. This is, I'm going to again take it to my sewing machine and I'm going to be free motioning these words on again with my black thread. I decided I'm going to try to, to do the, the word bird chirping, the two words, which are, which are in a larger font. I'm going to try to, to do those with uh, bobbin work. And that's just a diff different technique. And so I'm going to show you that also. But I just, I just fussy cutting this out now. And this is the freezer paper. So the wax side is down and I'm going to be ironing this into place with the wax side down. Again, going to be using my guide, my pattern, just to get where those words, the words should be and lining it up and then ironing that into place. I'm back over to my sewing machine again. And you notice I did a little jig back and forth there, and then I'm going to be clipping my thread. This is going to be in real time for a little bit again, so you can see my speed when I'm doing my writing. I did an automatic thread cut there and then went on to my next word and I'm doing that movement back and forth and then going again. And I'll be able to cut that thread real close. We had a really f great trip back from Florida to Minnesota and Francis the cat did great too. Um, my daughter lives in Nashville so we were able to stop and see her for a couple days. And any of my viewers from Tennessee or Kentucky, what are those beautiful trees that were in full bloom in, this would have been the first week in April. We noticed them, they were in, on the hillside along, the, along all the highways and just dispersed throughout all the other trees and just beautiful. It was a very enjoyable trip. And I'm back getting rid of my freezer paper and using a, a little seam ripper in those little delicate areas, those tiny areas. This does remove quite well though. And then flipped it over and I'm returning my heat, my, my stitch and tear. And now back to the, back to the freezer paper. And I am tracing these words, but I'm doing them in reverse this time. And I'm just tra tracing the word bird chirping. And again, flipped it over. So this is going to be iron on the back side of my piece and getting it into place. 
and then taking my iron and ironing it down. And I just wanted to share with you, I have my, my bobbin case out, and just wanted to share with you, there's a little screw on your bobbin case, and if you have a problem with it feeding right when you're doing the, the bobbin work, you can adjust that by, by loosening the bobbin tension a bit. And then again, a different type of bobbin case, but the same kind of screw. Now on, on my project that I'm working on, I'm using this rayon cording, and it's heavier than normal thread, but it's not as heavy as, as some threads and so are cording. So I was able just to not to, to do anything with the tension at all, the tension screw. I was able to just to use it the regular way. I am hand hand wrapping this bobbin with this pink cording. If any of you have done um, bobbin work, leave a comment in the in the down below. I'd like to just to hear from your thoughts whether you've had to adjust the tension and it may help other other viewers and other sewers who, who want to try this. Now notice I did leave a little bit a, a, a end on my on my cord. I, I do not want to use my automatic thread cutter for this because I do want a tail. I will be bringing that to the back side underneath side and and cutting it or, or tying my knot off. I have regular thread on my bobbin and I have a cream, or excuse me, my top stitching and I have a cream colored thread and that was a, maybe another mistake. I should have maybe tried to find a bright pink um, top thread, just regular, you know, regular um, sewing machine thread for the top. You can see that you can see the cream color a little bit when you, when you, when I turn it over, you'll maybe see it a little. It's not bad. What's fun about this, or it's kind of, you, you just don't know what it's going to look like because you're completely trusting that the bobbin is, is feeding right and looking right. And again, I'm just doing free motion on this. You can do bobbin work uh, just with your regular stitching, and it's just a fun technique, technique and one that I used to do a lot of, but I, it's just been a long time. And again, this is regular time. I don't want to do anything quick or fast with this. I'm just taking my time and just doing, trying to get on the line as much as I can. And again, use doing a, a tail on my bob on my bobbin, so I, on my thread, so I've got um, enough to tie off. And here's here's what it ter look, looks like. I'm just very pleased with it. Just poking a needle in there and and um, bringing that those to the back side. And then tying them off. More paper to come off. I'm just ripping this off. And now I'm doing um, some French knots for the for the dots on the eyes. It has been a long time since I've done any any kind of embroidery, and so my I'm a little rusty on these, but I managed to get the three little French knots, um, three three eyes. Just wrap three, I wrap two or three times around my needles and then and needle and then just pass it back down. Thank you so much for joining me today, everyone. I ended up putting this on an 18 by 18 inch pillow cover, and I, I'll show you a picture here. Um, I hope you have a chance to create and I hope you have a chance to try this bobbin but this bobbin technique it is a lot of fun and it just adds another dimension to to some to a project bye for now